In this part of video, we will show you the steps done directly in Fluent. You can follow the video and later do them on your computer or you can pause the video after each step in order to follow us in parallel. The latter option is not available for the audience, who are attending this workshop through live session. Open Fluent 2D with Double Precision option. Double Precision Solver is better for minimizing round-off errors. However it uses more memory and computational resources. Read the mesh file for cylinder supplied to you. In general settings, ensure that pressure based solver is selected. Enable the transient option under time. Keep other options to default settings. We will use coarse mesh file for this webinar, as it takes less time and serves our purpose better. For more accuracy you can use medium and fine mesh, which are also bundled with this webinar. After reading the mesh file, check quality. The minimum orthogonal quality is 0.75. From fluent point of view, 0 means worst quality and 1 means best quality. Fluent accepts as low as 0.01. The maximum orthogonal skew is 0.249. This quality metric is complementary to minimum orthogonal quality. As you can see the sum of minimum orthogonal quality and maximum orthogonal skew is 1. Third quality metric you will observe is aspect ratio. Which is the ratio of length to width of any given computational cell. So higher the aspect ratio, higher the stretching in mesh. Fluent accepts aspect ratio up to 1000 for single precision solver and up to 10,000 for double precision solver. Please note that this relaxation in Fluent is only applicable in boundary layers where flow gradients only exists in normal to wall direction. For far field. You should target for aspect up to maximum of 100. For our case aspect ratio is less than 35, which is good enough to proceed for solution. Since flow is incompressible, therefore energy equation is not required to be solved. So there is no need to activate it. In the viscous setting keep the model to laminar as we have already discussed it in our presentation. Now we need to set the material properties, which we have already calculated and, or assumed previously so that we get the Reynolds number equal to 150. Change density to 1 and viscosity to 0.0066667. Do not forget to click on the change create button to enforce the changes to take effect. Now go to boundary conditions and set the boundary conditions for velocity inlet. Double click on velocity inlet boundary condition. Change velocity specification method to magnitude and direction. Set velocity magnitude to 1, x component of flow direction to 1 and, y component of flow direction to 0. Click on OK to apply these values. For other boundary conditions, we will keep the default settings. But you must ensure that we have correct boundary types. For example for top boundary, boundary type should be symmetry. Set reference values. Compute it is from inlet boundary. Now go to solution method, change pressure velocity method to coupled. It is the most robust method for pressure based solvers family and gives you most accurate solution in very less number of iterations. It is about order to two order magnitude faster than the segregated pressure based solvers such as simple etc. For momentum we will use the second order accurate scheme. For some problems. Directly selecting the second order scheme may give you convergence problems. In that case it is recommended that you must use the first order scheme for first few hundred iterations. 
Once solutions is stabilized then switch to second order scheme. For transient formulation, we will use the second order implicit option which is highly recommended to get the accurate temporal resolution. In solution controls, we will set the Curon number to around 2 million. It is different than the usual Curon number you have studied in your CFD courses. For more details please refer to Fluent User Guide or write us. We will send you the required material for further study or will explain you in live session. For other options, keep the default settings. For residuals, set the convergence criteria to 1 to the power negative 15 for all variables. This is to ensure that solution does not stop before the required number of time steps we want to solve to collect the unsteady data for further processing. Now create the monitors for drag and lift coefficient. Enable print to console and plot options. Do not enable the write option. We will later come back to this panel and other data monitor panel to activate this option. This is because that we want that solution should be converged before we take any data files to process them, for example for finding out the mean drag. The convergence for unsteady CFD is different from the steady state solution. For steady solution, Solution is said to be converged when all residuals are reduced by some order of magnitude and residuals do not for further iterations. For unsteady solution is said to be converged when it achieves the periodic behavior, then we will write the data for drag, lift and surface monitors. For this particular case it is noted that it requires around 600 steps to attain the periodic behavior. The graphics of such behavior is shown results and discussion part of presentation, which is to be shown after this video tutorial on running case in Fluent. Now go to surface menu on the top of Fluent window and create a point with coordinates 1 for X and 0.5 for Y as discussed earlier. You can also create other surface points at different locations as we have already mentioned in PowerPoint presentation. Now again go to monitors panel and this time choose the surface monitors. Right click on the surface and create the new surface monitor. Select the print to console and plot option. As discussed earlier that we will enable the right option later, once solution is fully converged. In report type choose vertex average. And in field variable, select velocity and in sub panel select Y velocity. Select the point 6 where we want to monitor the Y velocity. For X axis and get day to every, choose the time step. You can also select other variables to monitor solution convergence or other locations in domain. Now click on OK to confirm the selection. Initialize the solution with hybrid option. Hybrid initialization gives you the better initialization for most of the cases expect in few cases, for example multiface simulations. From calculation activities go to solution animations. Click on create, edit. For animation sequence, set value to 1. If you want to create animations for more variable. You can set sequence to know a variable for which you want to record the animations. Save animation for each time step. Now click on define, set the window number to 5. You can select any windows which is not being used by other monitor. Now click on set, window will open the new with number 5 as we have just specified. Select contour and click on edit. Uncheck options for global range, auto range and clip to range. Please make sure that filled options is checked. Select velocity in variable and in sub option choose the vorticity. 
set the minimum value to 0 and maximum to 1. This range varies from problem to problem, but it is set in such a way that we are able to observe the vortex shedding. Now close contour plot windows and click on other two windows to confirm choices we made in solution animation panel. Now iterate the solution for 600 time steps from run calculation. For time step put the value of 0.291 which corresponds to 20 time steps per cycle as discussed earlier. Also enable the option for extrapolate variables which helps in accelerating the unsteady solution convergence. You can select different monitors such as lift, drag, residuals plot, surface monitor and animations. You can also show four monitors at a time to monitor them simultaneously. After running the solution for 600 time steps, now enable right options for drag, lift and surface monitor. These monitors will be used to get the mean drag, lift coefficients, and also for calculating Struhl number. Now go to run calculations and set no of time steps to 2000 and click on iterate. It will take some time therefore we will use the already processed data for 2000 time steps. But you can run it later and confirm the results. First we will make the animation from the data we saved for vorticity. For this go to animations under results. Double click on solution animation playback. Keep all options to their default settings. In right record format drop down menu, pick MPEG. Now click on write and wait for the fluent to finish making the animation file. It may take a while. Please sit back and relax. Once the animation is created, you can play from it from the working directory where you are saving your fluent files. I also wanted to include the graphics for the coefficient of pressure, root mean square lift coefficient, base pressure and separation angle as you might have observed in research papers. Just to give you an idea. For example you can get the separation angle from the coefficient of pressure plot where plot attains the plateau. But these steps requires a lot of time it is not possible to explain them in this tutorial due to time limitation. But if anyone is interested he or she can ask me during the live session via Webex online or through email or through Skype call. I will be more than happy to answer your queries. Now we want to calculate the Struhl number. For this we will use FFT, Fast Fourier Transform, options available in Fluent. You can also do it MATLAB using its built-in FFT module. For this go to plot and select FFT. For Y axis choose magnitude from drop down box. For x axis, choose Struhl number. Now load the lift coefficient data using the option Load Input Data. Now click on Plot to plot the Struhl number. Change the range for x axis. Put 0.17 for minimum and 0.18 for maximum. Please note that these values are specific to this problem only. As we can see from graph of Struhl number that peak is between these two limits. Narrow the range to accurately identify the Struhl number. Please note that Struhl number is a strong function of Reynolds number. From the graph shown by Fluent, the Struhl number is 0.1735. Please do it yourself as well to confirm the value. To get more accurate value, write the FFD history and use Excel to extract the exact value of Struhl number. Now we will find out the mean drag and lift coefficient. This can be done in Excel. Read the CD1 file into drag. Read the drag1 file into Excel using data and import text file. 
Locate the instantaneous drag coefficient file in working directory. Use different options in Excel to separate data in columns. First column represents the time step and second one represents the instantaneous drag coefficient. Use the average function in Excel to find out the men drag coefficient. Since this data is recorded for 2000 times steps, so we will get average drag coefficient for this interval. You can also increase this interval to get higher accuracy. But it is believed that this much data is enough to get the reliable data. Use the average function in Excel to get the average or mean drag coefficient. It is found that mean drag coefficient is 1.3136. Same is the true for lift coefficient. We will not do it for lift coefficient in this workshop. But since cylinder is symmetrical body, therefore the mean lift coefficient is zero. However in research papers, root mean square lift coefficient is reported which can be easily found from lift coefficient data we have just imported in the excel now go to results from graphics choose contours double click on contours and select the velocity and click on display you can set contour levels to any number between 1 and 100 by default it is 20 levels for better and professional looks, you can choose specialized post-processing softwares such as TechPlot and FieldView. CFD Post is also a good option. For vector plot, double-click on vectors below the contours. If mesh is very fine, you skip some level to clear the view. You can use vector options such as in plane and fixed length. This will give you the uniform length vectors. You can also play with other options to see their effects. You can also use other variables to color the vectors. 